Why do I think mm. that? Because of slavery. That's why. But we we both were colonized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So chains got put on us physically, but here chains got put on y'all minds, mm. Mentally. right? Mentally. Mm. And so we still trying to break out. Y'all trying to break out over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. We trying to break out over there. Right. You know. Um, and uh, that's the reason why, right there, it all boils back down to the people who did us wrong. It's not your fault, yeah. the way y'all think. Mm -hmm. It's not our fault, the way we think. It's the fault of the people <laughs> that tried to, yeah. you know, put us in that, that yeah. did put us in that situation. That's, true. that's who fault it is. Mm -hmm. that's true. I'm gonna just be real with you. Yeah, welcome to Web Nation Africa show. Um, actually, I found you from my comment section. Someone commented oh. on my video saying that, hey, you should check this guy out when I interview with show. Yes. So I, I took the initiative to find you. And now we're here, and uh, I really want to get to know your story. So sure. without further ado, you get into some of the questions. But you okay. can start with introducing yourself. Where are you yeah. from? Where did you grow up? How was you growing, growing up like? And yeah, let's start yeah. with that. No problem, no problem. Um, well, my name is Judah. Mm. Uh, actually, I got a couple of different names. My name is <laughs> Judah. My name is Telly. Ayo Babatunde. <laughs> TJ. I got a whole lot of names. Okay. Um, but a lot of people know me from my YouTube page, mm -hmm. which is Judah's Exodus. Yes. And so people call me Judah. It's Judah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm from the South Side of Chicago, okay. the ghetto of America, <laughs> um, and you know. Pretty much had you know that kind of upbringing yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us have in America. You okay. know, just you know being from the hood and then you know trying to make it out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so there's a lot that has that kind of comes along with making it out of the hood. Yeah. Um, and so for me myself, uh, I I pretty much you know just kind of with the Most High's help navigated through a lot of the struggle that a lot of us face. Um, and, you know, made it out of the hood, graduated from high school, went on to college, wow. got into corporate America, and then into entrepreneurship. Wow, wow. So, um, you said you grew up in the hood, right? Yeah. And then, can you tell us a little about, you know, the hood, what is it really like? From Ghana, I don't really understand what hood means, mm -hmm. but I think most direct friends really do understand. So, yeah. for, you know, the viewers watching, if elaborate. Sure. What really yeah, well, when I, when I say the hood, <clears throat> I mean the ghetto. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which, to be honest with you, is a place that the in America, um, ghettos were created by white supremacy. Oh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's when you put a certain group of people and you and you just box them into a certain place. I see. Right. Mm -hmm. And you do everything in your power not to let them get out of that place. Wow. and succeed and grow and develop wow right so you're wow. stuck wow right there right wow. and so you know of course after slavery uh and after the jim, jim crow era mm -hmm. um you know a lot of different big cities in america they created uh, what we call projects <clears throat> which are these really tall buildings where you just they, they're kind of like modern day slave ships wow and you just stuff all of the black people in them right and so what happens is the oppression that these people are under, they, you know, oppression makes you mad. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't break out. Oppression right. makes you angry. Right. Because you can't break out. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, unfortunately, you take your anger out on the closest person to you. Wow. You know, even though you might be suppressed by white supremacy, white supremacy don't live near you. But who does live near you is a family member, a friend. Right. And a lot of us, we take our uh, anger out on each other. Each other. Okay. So that's the ghetto. Interesting. So you came out from the ghetto and then you went to corporate America to establish eventually. business. Eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at what point did you get an idea to, you know, look at Africa, go back to the continent to, you know, re establish yourself, you know, and then why you even chose Ghana in the first yeah. place? Um, last year. That's when I thought about Africa. 
last year, 2021? 2021. Wow. January of 2021 wow. is when I started to consider Africa as a place to live. Okay. Wow. So then I'll take it from that. Bring mm -hmm. an interest in it. So welcome to Ghana anyway. Thank you, bro. Yeah. What was your first impression when you got to Ghana? What was what you expected? I mean, you guys are hearing a lot about Africa, mm -hmm. the good and the bad. Mostly about more. Mm -hmm. So, what was your first impression? What yeah. You well, I didn't come with any expectations. I didn't have any expectations when I when I first got here. I was told not to have any expectations, so I didn't come with any. I just came with an open mind. You know what I mean? Not knowing what I was going to encounter. Um, you know, but my first impression was a really cool one. You know, um, my feet first touched down in Ethiopia. Then I made my way to Ghana. Um, but when I got to Ghana, you know, came into Accra, immediately went to Cape Coast, right? So I spent my first six months in Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. It kind of reminded me of Jamaica. Okay. It reminded me of the Caribbean. Um, and so, you know, I've lived in the Caribbean before, uh, hence why I have jerk soul. Uh, and, you know, I just really thought it was peaceful, okay. you know, much different from where I'm from. You know, where I'm from, all day and night is police sirens, <laughs> ambulance sirens, mm -hmm. gunshots, all day, all night, every day, every day, every wow. day. So being here, I don't hear none of that. Yeah. Wow. It's silent. You know, at nighttime, I don't hear anything. I don't see anyone. Nobody's in the street. Not from not not in Cape Coast where I was at. You know, so, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. really, really peaceful, and that's what a lot of expats come over here for mm -hmm. is peace. Okay. Wow. With that being said, what are the biggest challenges you have had being in Ghana so far? Are there any biggest big challenges you want to share? Um, I really haven't. Man, because look, I done been through it all. I done seen it all, I done been through it all. So, you know, the challenges that I've seen here that that some of the expats, um, you know, get frustrated at, mm -hmm. it's not too much of an issue for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, so for instance, you know, sometimes the lights go out, Yeah. right? Yeah. I'm from the hood, I'm used <laughs> to the lights being out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's nothing to me. I done been, you know, in situations where the lights would be out for, you know, week. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because you can't afford to pay the bill. Oh. Not because the electricity grid. <laughs> y'all issue is y'all electricity grid. Yeah. Ours is we broke. I was confused for a minute. Like, how is life going? Oh, and this is America no we're talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look, if you don't got no money, they turn the lights out. Wow. The gas, you know what I'm saying? You'll be in your house. It might be cold in there, like, mm. you know. So anyway, yeah. um, so, so you know, some people, some people from the states, mm. you know, they get frustrated with the lights being out. They get frustrated with the roads. Yeah. Um, the Wi-Fi, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> stuff like that. You know, those things don't really bother me too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like, I, I would like some smooth roads as well. Yeah. I'm sure you guys would as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the biggest thing mm -hmm. that uh, I don't appreciate is um, sometimes the local people will charge me more. More, yes. Because than what they'll charge America. you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. Okay. So if me and you, if me and you go and um, get some mangoes, yeah, they gonna charge you more. I mean, they gonna less. charge me yes. more yeah. for the mango yeah. and charge you less. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I even yeah. get, get some sometimes. Mm -hmm. People even think that I'm just referring to mm -hmm. until I speak. And exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Before they start changing the prices. So. Exactly. Well, right. As soon as I open up my mouth, I don't even have to open my mouth. You can look at me and tell my friend. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, that's the only thing. Well, yeah. So we gotta we gotta straighten that out because okay. that's not cool. Yeah, that's not good. So let's talk. Let's come back a little bit. Here, where we are right now, Jet Soul. Yeah. How did it came into being? 
the name Jexo, how did it start, you know, and doing it here, you know, Yarifa, mm -hmm. Ghana, everything. Tell us about it. Yeah. That. Well, Jexo started um, really when I moved from Chicago to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. Okay. So um, at that time, you know, myself and the person that started Jerk Soul with me, um, you know, we kind of had an idea for like just a little small shack, not even Jerk Soul, but we we're gonna like, I was gonna sell like some of the desserts and stuff like that over where the uh, cruise ships come in, okay. in, in, the, in the Caribbean. And so, um, you know, we were actually in the midst of starting that and get that up and running and everything when um, this huge hurricane came through. Um, this was in 2017. Um, and so I had never been in a hurricane before, especially not a category five hurricane. Uh, but um, it was, it was crazy because, you know, you really feel like the power of God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When something like that comes yeah. through, it'll shake you and see just how small your life really is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and something like that will make you call out to your creator. <laughs> and so it, it did, it definitely did. And so, you know, when it was all over, mm -hmm. you know, you come outside and the whole island is a wreck. Everything, everybody's house, the roof off, off. off of the houses, uh, light poles down, and everything's just, yeah, up. man. So the airport was, was, was crumbled up. Um, the roads were all blocked. You can't even drive through the roads. Everything was crazy. Wow. Um, you know, no water, no lights. Um, and so, you know, whatever, I decided to you know, continue to live there and help them to rebuild. That was my mindset, you know what I'm saying? And then um, another hurricane Again. came through. Yeah. Wow. And then at that point, <laughs> I was like, man, you know, I was still, I was still down to stay there. Yeah. Um, but I was convinced by, you know, not only my, my girlfriend, but um, uh, my mom, you know, my mother didn't want me to be there no more. She's yeah. like, yo. Yeah. And my friends, they're dangerous. like, they're yeah. like, come on, come back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, peer pressure sent me back to the yeah. states, um, and so I had a really good friend in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, that got me on the last plane ticket. I ended up like floating over to Puerto Rico. Mm. The storm was then headed to Puerto Rico. Like, yo, I'm like, is it chasing me? <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm in Puerto Rico, everybody's freaking out, like, it's coming, it's coming. I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So then my friend got me on the, the, like, the last flight out of wow. Puerto Rico, brought me to St. Louis. I'm still thinking about a business. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I'm like, yo, God must have me here for, for reason. some reason, mm -hmm. right? And so I started looking for a space for a restaurant and I found it. I found a space for the restaurant uh, on my third day of being in St. Louis. Um, convinced my girlfriend at the time to move over to the states from the Caribbean mm -hmm. for us to you know start to start everything off and um, within a couple months we started mm -hmm. and it blew up wow. you know it quickly became one of the top restaurants in the city it was just a, a small carryout wow. but we're pumping out amazing food wow. you know that the wow. city really didn't you know wow. man they Bro, it's, it's really <laughs> just a different type of food, you mm, know? Yeah. It's not even traditional Caribbean. Like, it's, a, it's just a modern way of doing Caribbean food, mm -hmm. which is why our tagline is modern Caribbean cuisine, okay. right? And so, four years later, you know, which was last year, I started thinking, all right, it's time for me to get expand. back out of the States. Not expand, oh. it's time for me to leave the States. Okay. Leave. Yes, I wasn't trying, when I left mm. the first time, I wasn't trying to come back. Mm. The hurricane sent me Made back. back. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't trying to come back, okay. right? But I knew it was temporary. Mm. Yeah. So um, four years later, I'm like, all right, it's time for me to leave. Where am I gonna go? 
right? And so I started thinking about the Caribbean again. I was like, nah, I don't want to deal with no more hurricanes. So um, I started seeing all of these YouTubers, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people from America, from London, from Jamaica, like all these people doing YouTube videos talking about how they have moved to Africa, mm -hmm. um, East Africa, West Africa, different places. Well, most of them were, for Ghana, were from Ghana. Ghana, okay. Um, not all of them, but most of them. And so I started looking into Ghana. And once I started looking into Ghana, you know, a lot of um, opportunities started to present themselves. So wow. that's how I got here. Wow, interesting. And we got here, here is huge. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. that has been made here mm -hmm. and then you know since last year 2021 tell us a little bit since it's been established till now how is the journey like just briefly yeah i mean the man this life is a beautiful one you know what i mean because anybody that knows me like mm -hmm. since i was a little kid um you know and just growing up being a teenager and everything and just living the life that i live um you know, which was a good one, mm. you know, because even, even in the hood, you don't know that you're poor. How? We didn't know that we was broke. <laughs> I don't understand how. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> everybody broke. Broke, oh yeah, oh my gosh. You know, yeah. everybody around us, everybody that we see is poor. Oh, okay. So we don't know that we're poor. Oh, wow. We just live in life. Oh, Until that one day where you see your mom struggling, to yeah. pay the rent and then the lights go out and then the, yeah, then you be like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you know, wow. um, you know right. what I mean? So, um, but yeah, life from then mm -hmm. up until now, um, you know, it's, it's like a roller coaster. It's ups and downs, ups and downs, you know, but when you are in those downs, mm -hmm. You know, you really just got to, mm -hmm. you know, call on the most high and um, other people in your circle to help you mm -hmm. uh, come back up. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same way now, you know, mm -hmm. even uh, to this very moment, you know. Um, wow. So this having a location here in Ghana, which is not this isn't something that um, happens all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's a lot of expats here. Right. Uh, but a, a lot of them are retired, mm -hmm. looking for peace, like I said, looking right. to just live their, the rest uh, of their lives here. Yeah, you know, Pension, slow down, retirement. chill out, yeah. you know. Um, but, you know, th those that are in our 30s and 40s, you know, that come here, um, some of us have businesses. Right, yeah. But not too many have mm -hmm. something like this. Like this. It's huge. Exactly. This is yeah, this is <laughs> big. Almost <laughs> as big as yeah. the best restaurant of any any company. It's bigger than some big yeah. restaurants. Yeah. And kind of bigger names. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. this is gonna be a big name. Exactly. Yeah. What my desire is is to make this the um, not only the largest but uh, one of the most successful diaspora owned restaurants in the country of Ghana. Amen to that. That brings me to my next question. The name, Jerk Soul, the word, I, I want to know the motivation behind it. Sure. Because, yeah, Jerk is some kind of word. Mm -hmm. so maybe you have some explanation to, yeah. to clarify that. Well, it's twofold. Jerk Soul is, so the jerk part of it is, jerk is a Caribbean or Jamaican way of oh. cooking foods. <clears throat> Okay. Right? So, let's say if I'm making jerk chicken, I'm using certain spices, I'm using certain wood that I'm grilling the chicken on. Okay. All right? Pimento wood, thyme, allspice, and some other seasonings and, and, and everything. And, um, you know, that's what kind of makes authentic jerk. Um, and then, so, the soul part is that really comes from soul food, okay. you know, which is the type of food that has been labeled that the slaves in America kind of came up with. Like when we came out of slavery, okay. uh, we're still we're still actually in slavery. But when, <laughs> when the chains came off, yeah, right. when the chains came off, um, you know, we didn't have any no choice but to make mm. our own types of food because 
you know, the master, he's not giving you no good food. You right. got to, like, create your own type of stuff. You know, right. when you're in a bad situation, you got to yeah. make make okay. good out of something. So, anyway, um, you know, that's what was labeled our, our food that we kind of came up with, the soul food. Okay. Wow. So, jerk soul is a combination of really the Caribbean and the American South okay. or the African Americans, right. uh, which these are the same people. The same people. Yeah. You know, but they're just, you know, in different dropped locations, off in yeah. different locations, mm. right. Right? right? So on your menu, it's just Caribbean food. It's a fusion of both. Okay. It's a fusion of Caribbean and soul food. Okay. On the menu. Okay. Right. Yeah. And now that's that's in America and here, but there's also a Ghanaian dish or two in here as well because oh. I'm in Ghana. So. Oh wow! I was going to ask you <laughs> yeah. how a Ghanaian. And yeah. Caribbean food, are they accepting it well? Yeah, yeah, they're accepting it well. They like it, they love it. Um, yeah, man, you know, as long as, I mean, it's very different from, um, you know, the, the diet that most Ghanaians have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we all black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we the same people too. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even though the African American, the Jamaican, Guess where they guess where the slave ship was at? Yeah. Right Africa. here in Ghana. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Left here and dropped dropped people off in, in the Caribbean, dropped us off in America, mm -hmm. and then the slave ship came back and picked up some more people from here. <laughs> so it's the same, you know, it's, it's, we're the really the same people. Exactly. You know what I'm true. saying? And so I look at like you guys as long lost cousins. Cousins, yeah. You know what That's I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I look at it. And mm -hmm. I need y'all to look at me the same way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to ask that. Do you, do you ever feel like a foreigner in Ghana? Have you, have you ever felt like being a foreigner here before? Um, not really. Only, only when I'm treated differently. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's the only time. Only time, yeah. Maybe they see you. Like the pricing yeah. thing you said earlier on. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit. Is this your first ever business um, established here? In yeah, because I've only been here for 11 months. Okay, so this is your first. My, yeah, it's okay. my first. And I must say you are doing really good mm -hmm. for 11 months. Yeah. Man. Okay. Thank you. I'm very impressed with your establishment. Yeah. Thank you yeah, very much. Very, very impressed. I wanted to ask, do you think it's possible to be a millionaire here in Ghana? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I'm not doing it for thousands. You know, I'm trying to, um, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, um, I'm definitely, you know, I, I want to be as successful as possible. Yes. You know, and I want to take a lot of people along with me. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. You know, and which is, which is why I've, um, you know, as soon as I got here to get the furniture that you see here, right. you know, I started to go to some local individuals, right, to build these beautiful tables. I see that. To build these thrones. Very different. Yeah, to build my, my animals. I got animals everywhere. It must be very difficult to make. How long or what was the difficulties actually? Because it looks very complicated mm -hmm. to really design stuff design like that. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then trying to get it, you know, to get out. Yeah. How, how was that? Were you encountered any difficulties? Yeah, you know, the only, the only you know? difficulty I encountered was the time that I was told that it was going to take oh. to get it done. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was told that it was only going to be about a month. It took about three months. Yeah, that's so that kind of <laughs> that's Ghanaian timing. That's, that's what I keep hearing every time I tell somebody that they most, be like, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. Because a, a lot of um, diasporans complain about how laid back most Ghanaians mm -hmm. are. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? It's just I don't know if it's good or bad. I think it's just different because we're not used to that. Right. You know, in America, it's like quick, quick, yeah, and then that's everything. what brings most anxiety, depression in other um, part of the world, where mm -hmm. you're too consumed with work and doesn't yes. have time for your personal self or exactly. even your spiritual life, and then it comes too crazy. So being laid back, I don't know how you have your take on that, but most people think it, it's something that they enjoy yeah. to some extent. And again, that's why a lot of us even came here mm. is to get out of the rat race, what we right. call the rat race right. in America, to get out of that and to come here and to chill out, to lay back and get some peace. Mm -hmm. Now, there has to be balance. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. 
when it comes to business, you can't be laid back. No, yeah. If me and you doing business right. and you tell me a certain date, that's what I'm going to expect. Exactly. And I don't want no excuses, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. what's involved? Money, Money. and time. time yeah. And time is what? Money. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and no being laid back when it comes to business. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to play that with you, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to business, yeah. hey, let's, let's yeah. get on it. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, we can keep doing business yeah. and we can come up together. That's right? True. That's true. So, that's true. Well, I need to structure my next question very well so that my audience will understand it and you will also give a better answer. So, you know, when Ghanaians want to set up a, uh, a business like a restaurant, we want the restaurant to look more Western. Mm. You like the, the furniture, the design. Sure. We, want, we want to have an American feel. Mm -hmm. But when American also wants to have a business in Ghana, he wants to have it to look more African. Exactly. Like, like what I'm saying. So, is it a way, or do I put it like you are escaping the land of opportunities? seen here as another land of opportunity mm -hmm. because we see America as a land of opportunity mm -hmm. but you guys are coming and now we are confused like what's right. happening we yeah. want to go there because we see it as a land of opportunity mm -hmm. but they are also come and set it up a business what do you have to say about it? yeah well I don't look at America as a land of opportunity well it's new to me yeah. <laughs> he doesn't understand what you mean by yeah. that you oh, want to go there I'm, right I'm going to break it down yeah break it down you know well, I, I, I'll say it like this. For a black man, it's not a land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. For a black man, it's a horror story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For us, it's, um, you know, you ever saw a scary movie mm -hmm. before? Yeah. Well, you ever lived in a scary movie? You never lived in a scary movie. We live a scary movie every day. Wow. It's a, it's a movie. Our lives are, like, you, you took that camera and followed one of us. You know what I'm saying? Or at least where I'm from, you follow us. It's a scary movie. You know what I'm saying? That is even scary here. It is, and it's true. And all you gotta do, you can Google. Yeah, I've seen Google, a lot of um, crimes and Google yeah, you know, um, police brutality. Chicago, like you know, Chicago murders, right? And what you'll see is, like for instance, last weekend. I think there was like 50 shootings and like 10 people yeah. died. And That's cool. every weekend. Okay, wow. and then on the regular days, like what's today, Monday, you still gonna have a lot of deaths. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's it's like, um, you know, when you black in America, you got a target on your back. Yeah. Right. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, um, the uh, the white people there are still against us. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing yeah. has changed there. Yeah. Um, and we've been oppressed so long that, like I said earlier, we bump heads with each other. Yeah. So white people kill us and we kill us. The cops kill us. Everybody kills us. Black. Yeah. So for us, it's, it's like being in a, in a, um, a horror flick. Yeah. So when I, when I meet drivers, you know, that's taking me somewhere and they're asking me, uh, about America, they like, yeah, I want to go to America yeah, and stuff, exactly. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I always tell them, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. You might not make it back. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So uh, I keep it real with people I run into. I'm not going, I know a lot of people have this dream about America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's a dream for some people, but it's a nightmare for the black man. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that I hope explains. I hope he convinced yeah, you. Yeah, it, it, it explains a lot. It, 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 it okay. Explains a lot. Well, then that being said, we are also going to ask if people are watching you and they are uh, motivated by your story and want to come to Africa, yeah. Ghana. What do you have to tell them? Any advice? Yeah, man. Look, look. We got to get out of Babylon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, America. I mean, I'm just be honest with you, America is falling. Mm. It is falling. It has been for the last 20 something years. It's been crumbling right before our eyes. And even though, even right now, there's food shortages, there's gas shortages, there's a lot of uh, crazy things that's happening right before us. And we're not even getting prepared. The white people are getting prepared because they see what's happening. Yeah. They leaving. Or if, they, if they're there, they're uh, stocking up. They're getting shelters. 
You know, they're going underground, right? In case something happens, something is about to happen. Not even, <laughs> not even in case when it happens, right? And so, but for us, we still partying and shaking ass yeah. and, and kicking it and killing each other and gang banging. And, you know, we, we, we still doing stupid stuff instead of getting ready for what's to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, what I would say to answer your question is to, to any of my people that's in the States or abroad, London, the Caribbean, Netherlands, wherever we at in the diaspora, if you've never thought about Africa, you must. You must. You must, at the very least, buy a ticket, come over, visit, see what real peace is like. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like that I'm learning um, from you guys, and I know that you guys are learning from me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when the diaspora comes back, and then we link up together, do you know how powerful right. that is going to be? No, nobody will be able to stop us. Right. Nobody will be able to stop us. Yes. So when we, so we're learning you, you're learning us, and we have to have some harmony in that, right? That has to happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, then um, Chinese people won't be able to come and, uh, you know, take over. Like they're trying to take over Jamaica, right? Yeah. They won't be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because look, um, we've learned a lot from being over in America, under the white man in America. Right. You know what I'm saying? We learned a lot just being in corporate America, um, uh, just being over there. We have a lot of different skills that Africa could benefit from. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got it. And so um, all we got to do is link up, man. The cousins well, got to link up. Yeah. With each other. Let me ask you this. Since you've been here, what do you say is the greatest lessons you've learned so far? Moving to Africa, Ghana, not knowing anybody here, mm -hmm. I assume establishing business here. What are some lessons, key lessons that you've learned so far? Well, to be fearless. Fearless, okay. You know, um, I feel like a lot of people have fear when they come here. Mm -hmm. It's just the fear of the unknown. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. they, don't, they, don't, they don't know how it is here and this is the thing we've been taught a certain way over there about Africa right you know what I'm saying right. so you know when we're little kids they show us these commercials and they show us what Africa looks like um, but like you know really impoverished yeah. impoverished images yeah. and so we'll grow up like I don't want to go there look at that mm -hmm. I don't want flies all over my face and right. be skinny and all. That's what they would show us. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? I started thinking differently because I heard this one song from Akon. Mm -hmm. You know what Akon is? Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Akon made this song a, a long time ago called Mama Africa. Mm. Bro, that <laughs> song, when I heard that song, it, it like did something to me. Mm. Like I instantly... Like, it, was, <laughs> it just opened up my mind. He, he was singing about it, and I was just like, yeah. Probably, and then probably like 10 years later, I'm here. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, give three best business advice to anyone. Um, you, you've done your due diligence. You, you really uh, researched what would work. You established food uh, business by yourself. Yeah. Someone wants to come. They are convinced. They want to take their risk. Third best business advice. Number one, get out of your own way. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, because a lot of us, we can get in our own way. You know, we can stop ourselves. Mm -hmm. You can have a dream. You can have a goal. But then you can convince yourself not to, to it. pursue it. Mm. Right? So that's number one. Number two, do your due, di do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. Meaning... Cross all your T's, dot all your I's, mm -hmm. meaning um, take care of every single thing that you have to take care of so that you can establish a 
a strong foundation for your business, right? Mm -hmm. Get all the permits that you need to get, all of the documentation that you need to get, um, you know, so that's the second thing I would say. And then number three, you know, um, like Nike, just do it. <laughs> Just do it, man. Just, you know, uh, that kind of goes back to the, the fear thing. Don't have no fear. Be fearless. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I think that a lot of us will accomplish those goals that we have, those dreams that we have in our head. We can turn those dreams into reality, right? And that's what I'm all about. I had a lot of dreams. The reason why we sitting inside of my restaurant right now is because when I was 16, you had a dream. I, my one of my first jobs was McDonald's. You ever heard of McDonald's? Yeah. It's a burger place. Yes. Yeah. And so I worked at McDonald's as my first job. And I remember when I was in there as a cook, I was like, man, this, I saw the operation. I was like, man, they making a lot of money. Right. I was like, well, I was like one day I'm gonna have a restaurant. Right. And now right. And now we're now we're sitting in my restaurant. But I also had other dreams as I grew up. One day I wanted, I, I said to myself that I wanted to write a book. I currently have a book on oh, wow. uh, Amazon. What is it? Um, I have a book that I wrote with uh, my good friend Danielle called Personal, Professional, and Positive, okay. the 30-Day Challenge. Okay. And so it's a 30-day challenge to uh, really live your most positive and professional life. Wow. Um, and it's on Amazon. Okay. So, you know, um, I, I wanted to you know, get into media, and I did that. So me and my friends, we uh, created Think Positive magazine. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful, full-color magazine, really just encouraging and highlighting the positive things that's going on in the black community. Um, so, you know, I wanted to get in real estate, I did that. I wanted to get into trucking, I did mm -hmm. that. You know, so I wanted to get into a lot of different things. So I'm not just about restaurants, I'm about a whole lot of different things. Yeah, if it makes, uh, if it make money, then it makes sense. All right. Well, like I said in the beginning, I am very impressed. You are doing a very great job. I wish you all success. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also heard that you were hiring. Yes. So, yeah, there are a lot of Ghanaians who mm -hmm. want to watch this video. Okay. So you can talk about the positions available. Sure, and sure. How right. they can apply. And, uh, Definitely. Um, well, right now, we're always looking for good talent. Um, you know, so some of the positions that we have is as chefs, servers, as well as uh, mixologists, as well as mixologists. Um, so uh, if anyone has those skills and if they're talented and smart, educated, and they can communicate well, um, go to Instagram, follow us at jerk underscore soul, send me a DM. Mm -hmm. And then you know nice. it, it'll, it'll come straight to me, <laughs> and then uh, we'll 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 talk. Yeah. Okay. So I saw your Instagram. You have a lot of followers. Yeah. 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 So we we will wrap up, but then before we do, um, I want to ask you this: Does it all worth it leaving the land of opportunities mm -hmm. coming here? Does it worth it? Do you really think it worth? It? You said, is it worth it? Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Yes, it's worth it. Super worth it. Even if it's just to get out of there mm -hmm. and like a lot of expats do, get out of here mm -hmm. and just stick your feet down in the sand here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's totally worth it because um, you can't put a value on peace. Peace is invaluable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I talk to a lot of the diaspora, I ask them, I'll say, you know, if you were able to describe, you know, your experience being here in, in Ghana, if you can describe it in one word, what would it be? And they always say peace. Peace. And I agree. I Do you agree? agree Ghana is the most peaceful country in the world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've had, we had that title. Yeah. yeah. You think so? Ghana is the most peaceful in the world. Well, I've seen, um, I've, I've, I've saw that it was voted. Yeah. The second most peaceful. Yeah. Um, and so, and, I, and me living here now, I can tell mm. that that's true. Yeah. You know, mm. I, I tell my people at home, like, yo, these people are really chill. Like, and I let them know, I'm like, yo, they might get into an argument mm. with each other, but they're not about to start physically fighting, mm. and they definitely not going to kill each other. No. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. With us, you can step on somebody. You can look at somebody and might die. You might die. <laughs> I know several situations like that. A look. Or you know how like here it's a lot of people, so you might bump into somebody. Yeah. But at home, if you bump into somebody and it's just an accident, that is enough to start a shooting. Wow. Or a fight. That's enough. So if you can imagine, we're so wound up just by being over there for 400 mm. years. Mm. Mm. Any slight thing mm. sets us off. Mm. So that's what 400 years of slavery can do to somebody. Yeah. Now, I had someone say that um, he is coming to Ghana. Mm. Um, to seek uh, greener pastures, and mm -hmm. I never really understood. Do you think you, you, yeah. you consider you coming to Ghana? Of course. <laughs> this is greener pastures. Right. So all that, oh, we want to go to America. Y'all got to get that out y'all head, man. Yeah. Those days. So I advise the African uh, youth watching. Right get it now. out your head. Listen, you got everything in Africa that you need to be successful. Everything is already here. That's why the white man comes here. Right. That's why the Chinese man comes here. Yeah. The Lebanese come here. The mm. Arabs come here. Yeah. Why? Because they know. Y'all don't even realize it, but they know mm. yeah. that this is where the resources are. Right? Wow. But us, we thinking like, no. Oh, it's somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere else. No, it's right. Why do you right. think that is? Why do I think mm. that? Because of slavery. That's why, you know what I'm saying? So um, another thing that I've noticed is because the colonizers, yeah, you know, so my forefather got caught, right? And put on the slave ship. Yours didn't. That's why you, you didn't get put on the slave ship, right? That's why I'm still here. That's why you're still here, right? Because if my lineage, my forefather, if he didn't get caught, I probably would still be here too, right? right? Um, so, but we we both were colonized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So chains got put on us physically, but here chains got put on y'all minds, mm -hmm. Mentally. right? Mentally. Mm -hmm. And so we still trying to break out. Y'all trying to break out over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. We trying to break out over there. Right. You know, um, and uh, that's the reason why, right there, it all boils back down to the people who did us wrong. It's not your fault, yeah. the way y'all think. Mm -hmm. It's not our fault, the way we think. It's the fault of the people <laughs> that tried to, yeah. you know, put us in that, that yeah. did put us in that situation. That's, true. that's who fault it is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just be real with you. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much for you know accepting and inviting us to this sure. place. Uh, it's a wonderful place that you have here. We will thank you. Show yeah, around and where is it? Just uh, direction again. Mm -hmm. Sure. It? Yeah. So if we're, somebody wants to come here, mm -hmm. yeah. How are they coming? Yeah. So we're on the outskirts of Greater Accra, mm -hmm. right before Abri. Mm -hmm. yep. We're in the town called Oyarafa. Okay, uh, and more specifically, we're right before the Abri toll booth, right before you go into the mountains, and so that's why across the street from us, you have the uh, a beautiful panoramic view of the Abri Mountains. Wow. Um, and so, if you get on the the N4, mm -hmm. it'll take you straight here. We're at the top on the rooftop of a Yarrafa Mall. Yeah, so a Yarrafa wow. Mall is the GPS to Abri on the way. Wow. That's right. Wow. So thank you once again. Thank you so yeah, much man. for having us. For sure. Thank you so really much. Nice. Learned a lot today. Yeah, man. Good conversation, bro. Good All conversation. Right. Thank you.